Hello and welcome to another Mod Spotlight. This time we will be going over extra utilities. This is part one of probably two parts. It might go to three depending on how long the second part is. But this is going to be covering the major blocks and some of the power systems that are provided in extra utilities. Alright, so first up we have the wooden spikes. They do half a heart of damage every time an entity touches them. Next up we have the iron spikes which deal a heart and a half. And we have the golden which deal two. And then we have the diamond which will just straight kill me when I have three hearts. I am not sure how many hearts it deals, I believe it deals four, although I'm not positive on that. Next up we have the filing cabinets. They, The basic filing cabinet will, st uh, will store a single item type. See I can't put this spawn egg inside uh, of non-stacking items so like you can do bows, you can do swords, anything that doesn't stack normally but it will stack them nicely. Then the advanced filing cabinet will uh, allow you to have up to, let's see if I can put anything else in there, boots, I don't believe I can. Ah oh, yes I can, I'm just going to put those items. It will allow you to store mul multiple things uh, that do, don't normally stack as stackable items. So the advanced filing cabinet is pretty nifty like that. Next up we have the blackout curtains. Let's grab some of them. Now the blackout curtains serve two purposes. First is to diminish light level and the second is to eliminate light level. So as you can see it's reasonably bright in here. Throw down a couple of those, it got darker, but when you place a second layer of them, it becomes completely dark. So that's pretty nifty. So you want a black room? You can get a black room with some blackout curtains. Next up we have the chandelier. The chandelier produces light level greater than torches and glowstone. It will also prevent all mobs from spawning within a 16 block radius. Next up is the magnum torch, which has the same light level or maybe a little bit better. Light underscore new no oh, okay. Hello. Next up we have the Magnum Torch, which will produce the same light or a little bit better than the chandelier. It also has the added benefit, aside from being extremely expensive, of stopping all mob spawns within a 64 block radius. Alright, so next up we have the Sound Muffler. The sound Muffler does exactly what it sounds like. It muffles sound. Door is quiet. Doors loud. So when the sound muffler is down within a small radius, 10 to 20 blocks, it will reduce the uh, loudness or volume of all sounds produced by vanilla blocks and some mod blocks. Next up is the rain muffler. Oh my goodness, that's a teleporting villager. Uh, it does exactly like the sound muffler, except that it only muffles rain. Next up we have glowstone glass, and this is the glass that I'm choosing to look at because it has the added benefit, aside from being glass, that it also emits light at the um, strength of glowstone, so that's pretty nifty. Next up we have drums. The standard drums will store 256 buckets of a various liquid. They also take on the color of the liquid that is in the drum, so that's pretty nifty. Then we have the bedrockium drum, which... Bedrock... actually, let's just get ourselves some water. The bedrockium drum will give us access to 65,000 buckets of a certain liquid. Should you manage to fill that with anything but water, congratulations, I don't know what you could possibly do with that many buckets of whatever. Next up we have the redstone clock. The redstone clock is a single block that will emit a redstone pulse once every second. So that's pretty nifty if you want to set up a one second timer, like say a clock. Next up we have the trading post. The trading post will find all villagers within like 30 to 60 block radius, I'm not sure what the exact size is, and will allow you to trade with them. So I have three, uh, two villagers right there, and then there's that villager over there. So um, let's click on him, and we can now trade an emerald in a safari net for a safari net mystery. Pretty nifty. Next up we have the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt will move an entity or item in the direction that the arrow is pointing. So let's hop on there. Oh, I'm not. Uh, my hands are off the keyboard. 
It's just moving me along, as you would expect from a conveyor belt. We'll also do this with items. Look at the blackout curtain go. So, you can make a cool item system or movement system with the conveyor belts. Now, say if I was walking normally on there, I'm moving at the rate of sprint. Um, sprinting on them doesn't really increase the speed all that much, uh, so that's a little bit sad. Next up we have the various generators. Let's grab some coal, because with any eye, you can see how much uh, each generator makes with by, by mousing over the item that you would use as a fuel type. First up we have the survivalist generator, which is the cheapest generator. It also is the most efficient generator when it comes to coal that I know of. It will produce 80,000 RF total at a rate of 5 RF per tick. Only downside is it takes about 14 minutes, 13 and a half minutes to make that uh, 80,000 RF. Next up we have the furnace generator, which will generate 20,000 RF at 40 RF per tick, so 8 times faster for a quarter of the uh, total power um, when using coal, so that's pretty nifty if you need more power faster. Next up we have the lava, the, eh, excuse me, we have the lava generator, which will produce um, 40,000 RF per bucket of lava. I've used two buckets of lava in here, and to get the bucket of lava in there, you just right click on the lava generator, and there it goes, 40 RF per tick, 40,000 uh, 40, RF. Next up we have the ender generator, ender, pearls will generate 30,000 RF at 40 RF per tick. Ender eyes will generate 120,000 RF, so eye of enders are far better fuel source for the ender generators than ender pearls. Next up, we have the heated redstone generator. All right, so destabilized redstone. Redstone. And lava. All right, so the, the heated redstone generator has two uh, functions. First is using 125 millibuckets of lava and a single unit of redstone to generate 25,000 RF at the rate of 40 RF, per, I mean 80 RF per tick. The next way is using destabilized redstone um, at 100 millibuckets per use to generate, um, I, I'm not sure how much, but let's just uh, grab ourselves another one of those real quick delete that and put the destabilized redstone in there and look at that 80 RF per tick Use it uh, goes for 15 seconds at 125 millibuckets per use so it's not bad for fuel source especially if you have thermal expansion installed next up we have the culinary generator which will use food products to generate uh, redstone flux. Steak, which is the best vanilla food, will give you 46,000. And say you have a mod called Pam's Harvest Craft, the best food that I know from Pam's Harvest Craft is the hearty breakfast, which will produce almost 80,000 RF. So that's pretty nifty. Next up, we have the potions generator, which will produce power based on the strength of the potion. So let's just grab that. And where is the potion that I was wanting? There it is. All right, so the awkward potion and the thick potion will generate 60,000 RF at 20 RF per tick, while as the highest tier of potion will generate 256,000 RF at the rate of 320 RF per tick. Next up, we have the solar panel, uh, solar generator, which will uh, generate power during the course of the day depending on the light level that it is receiving from the sun. This will increase over over the course of the day, maxing out at 40 RF per tick at noon. Now to the solar generator has one downside. It will only charge or will only transmit. To transmit, you have to apply a redstone pulse, it waits 10 seconds, and then it will start transmitting its power at a very low rate. So the solar panel, while continuous power uh, pretty much for free after you've made it. It requires you to toggle it on and off at night. That's pretty easy to do with the daylight sensor. Next up we have the TNT generator. TNT. So the TNT generator will generate 480,000 RF at 80,000 RF per tick. The only downside to the TNT generator is it causes explosions. 
where it will just destroy items, uh, like item frames, uh, that are near it. It will also be pretty good auctions, so it's pretty nifty. Next up we have the pink generator. It is a comical generator. You just search for pink in any eye, and it will generate power at 1 RF per tick for 600 RF total for pink wool, and it doesn't get much better, so or any better from what I can see. So don't bother making the pink generator, it's just funny, makes hearts, whatever. Alright, so the next up is the high temperature furnace. The high temperature furnace burns coal at the rate of 400 RF per tick, but only for 5000 RF. So if you need a gigantic burst of power really quickly, high temperature furnace is what you want. That is if you have a steady supply of coal because it only lasts a very short amount of time. Last up, we have the Nether Star Generator. The Nether Star Generator is a bit ridiculous. It will produce 96 million RF at the rate of 40,000 RF per tick. There is a gigantic downside to this generator, aside from the fact that it consumes Nether Stars. It is, when you're near it, you get the Wither Effect. Eh, and I withered away. So sad. Alright, so let's avoid the uh, that generator real quick. Actually, let's just switch into creative. Next up, oh, etheric sword, we need that. Next up, we have the soul fragments, which are crafted when you are in. Go away. You're gonna kill me. Uh, are crafted when you put an etheric sword into your 2x2 two two crafting grid, and then you get a soul fragment. The downside to crafting a soul fragment is it consumes the etheric sword and it will reduce your t maximum amount of health by one full heart. Now, it didn't do that to me because I'm already at three hearts because I've made seven soul fragments. These soul fragments are used in the creation of the watering can reinforced. Now, the watering can reinforced is a watering can which will accelerate crop growth but can be used by machines such as turtles from Turtlecraft and stuff like that. I had a system with uh, shells from sink uh, because the hearts are tied to the sink shell, not to the player entity. So, um, unfortunately, since I did this on my main character and didn't have a shell using while I did that, I that just sucks for me. So I only have three hearts forever on this world now, unless I find a way to increase my total hearts. Next up, we have the builder's wand. The builder's wand, let's grab ourselves some sandstone, sandstone, will build um, up to nine blocks total uh, when you right click. Look at that, pretty nifty. So the, it also has the added benefit of not just having to be side by side, but also you can do it in diagonals. So look at that, I just made a nice little tower thing. All right, next up we have the precision shears. Precision shears will sheep. <laughs> they won't sheep. The precision shears will, when you clip sheep, will send the wool directly to your inventory. It will also have a higher chance than normal to give you more wool than you would normally get. It also has another function when you're holding shift, you can right click any block that would be able to be mined by a stone pickaxe, and it sends that directly to your inventory. So let's get rid of the sandstone. Oh, look at I just gained three sandstone. Pretty nifty. Next up, we have the erosion shovel. The erosion shovel is a normal shovel, but let's grab ourselves some dirt. There we go. Put some dirt down. The erosion shovel. Hold on, I'm going to go be sad by that stupid TNT thing. The erosion shovel mines extremely quickly, but doesn't give you the blocks back. So if you just need to get through a bunch of dirt real quick and don't want to clutter in your inventory, erosion shovel is the way to go. Next up is the destruction pickaxe. Where did it go? There we go. Destruction pickaxe. Now the destruction pickaxe only works on cobblestone. I mean, not cobblestone, only works on smooth stone. So let's grab ourselves some smooth stone. It works the exact same as the erosion shovel, except it only works on smooth stone. Mines very quickly, but does not give you the block back. 
So that's pretty nifty right there. Now let's clear our inventory. Next up, we have the healing axe. The healing axe, when when it is in your in your hand, will slowly restore hunger. But since I recently died and haven't done anything to lose hunger, um, it will not do anything. Now let's say I punch this sheep and it's no longer happy with me. It's at five health. Now I take the healing axe and punch the sheep. It's supposed to heal the sheep. But I don't think it'll do that since I'm at three hearts. Anyway, continuing onwards, we have the reversing hoe. The reversing hoe is a pretty much a hoe, but in reverse. It will take tilled farmland. Let's grab ourselves a normal hoe. Tilled farmland and put it back to dirt. It will also take uh, crops and revert them to the previous growth stage. I just put that wheat from 59% to 0% by right clicking four times. Pretty nifty. Next up, we have the sonic, uh, I mean the sonar glasses, which when they're equipped, give you this weird uh, outline of uh, as if you're looking through goggles. And what they're supposed to do, but they don't for me for whatever reason, is show an outline, a wire out frame of, oh, you can see it flashing around. Uh, 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 never mind. A wire out frame of the blocks of all blocks within five meters of the same type. So that's pretty nifty. Let's get rid of those since they uh, are a little bit annoying to wear. Next up, we have the golden bag of holding. The golden bag of holding is a really nifty thing. Let's grab two more just to illustrate this point. Golden bag of holding is a portable double chest. Let's put a wooden hoe in there. Let's put the reversing hoe in there. And let's put the healing axe in there. Each one is a double chest with its own in inventory system that will hold a double chest and is unique. So each double ba a golden bag of holding is unique. So pretty much if you wanted to fill all of your inventory except for one slot with golden bag of holdings, you could carry a massive amount of stuff, but at the drawback of having to pull it all out one at a time. Next up, we have the watering can. The watering can accelerates crop growth rate. So the watering can, and it will do in a 3x3 three three block area, and just hold right click on it and crops will grow at a faster rate or should come on wheat oh it's uh, midnight so it won't do that there we go now 14 percent 29 you get the picture it will increase the growth rate uh, substantially if you're just sitting here holding right click on it what was added in a recent update I'm not sure how long ago is it will also work on non-bone mealable plants such as the ender lily which would normally die if you bone mealed it. See, I just caused it to grow up to 43% from 29% by holding right click on it. So that is all for this spotlight of extra utilities. I hope that you enjoyed it. In the next spotlight I will be going over the transfer nodes. Transfer nodes. The transfer pipes, the various different pipes, and the upgrades for the nodes and what they all mean. And I might get into the QED, that might be in the third episode, depending on how long the transfer node uh, spotlight takes. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, a rating and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Um, please comment below if, I, if you think I missed anything or if I had any incorrect information, I will change that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye now.